Hello. Today I want to start talking about dot products. So most of you have probably seen dot products before, but let's start with just the definition. If I have one vector, x1, x2, xn, and another vector, y1, y2, yn, the dot product is x1, y1, plus x2, y2, plus et cetera, et cetera, xn, yn. And here are some basic algebraic properties that you can just check from this definition. Dot product doesn't care what order you multiply in. X dot Y is the same as Y dot X. If I toss in a scalar R, that rescales the dot product. And dot product distributes over vector addition. And notice we could also write dot product using transposes. If we take the transpose of vector x, that will give me the row vector x1, x2, xn. And if we then multiply that by the column vector y1, y2, yn, what we get yet when we go across this row, and down this column will exactly be the dot product. Okay, and what I wanna talk about first is just thinking about dot products in geometry. So first, I'm going to describe this from the perspective of assuming that you know a bit of geometry, that you know the Pythagorean theorem, you may have even seen a little bit of trigonometry and you know the law of cosines. I'm going to assume you're happy with all those ideas. And then in a little bit, I'll turn the tables and say, what if you're not? So if x is some vector x1, x2, xn, then when I dot x with itself, I get x1 squared plus x2 squared plus blah, 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 plus xn squared. And by the Pythagorean theorem, that's exactly the square of the length of the vector x, right? If I have some vector x over here, and here is its horizontal component, and here is the vertical component. Then, and the Pythagorean theorem tells me that the length of the vector x is going to be the square root of x1 squared plus x2 squared. And that is exactly the square root of x dot with itself. And the same thing in more dimensions. So when I dot a vector with itself, I get the square of its length. Now, many of you may already know a interpretation for dot product of two different vectors as length of x, length of y, cosine theta. And I wanna show you where that comes from. So suppose I have two vectors, x and y, with an angle of theta between them. And notice that y minus x is the vector that goes from the tip of x to the tip of y. So if I dot y minus x with itself, and I expand using a distributive property, I'm gonna get x dot x minus two x dot y plus y dot y. And we just said, whenever I dot a vector by itself, I get the square of its length. So this gives me length of x minus y squared is length of x squared plus length of y squared minus two x dot y. Now compare that with the law of cosines. The law of cosines tells us that if we have some triangle where this side has length C, this side has length A, this side has length B, then C squared is A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine theta. It's a generalization of the Pythagorean theorem to triangles which are not right triangles. And so if we compare these two formulas, we see c squared is x minus y squared, a squared is x squared, b squared is y squared. So we must have that x dot y is length of x, length of y, cosine theta. And in particular, we see x and y are perpendicular. That's when in theta is 90 degrees, so cosine theta is zero. x and y are perpendicular if it only if x dot y is zero. Okay, 
So that's where that x dot y is length of x, length of y cosine theta formula comes from. I'm now going to turn the tables. Suppose you didn't know geometry, or more realistically, suppose you were really uncomfortable with me using all this geometric language of length and angle when I was in more than three dimensions. You have geometric intuition. It comes from living in three-dimensional space your whole life and measuring lengths and angles in the space you live in. You don't have much geometric intuition for higher dimensions. So here's, so what we're going to do is we're going to reverse the direction of logic. We are going to define the length of a vector in high dimensions to be the square root of x dot x. And we are going to define the angle between the vectors x and y by cosine inverse x dot y over the length of x, length of y. So these formulas are what we mean by length and angle once we get into higher dimensions. Now, there's one caveat I should apply to this. I can only take the inverse cosine of a number which is between negative one and one. So this formula is only going to work if x dot y is bounded by length of x times length of y. So this turns out to be a true statement. It's called the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality. And for those who are curious, I'm going to prove it for you now. And then after that, I'm going to go back and repeat these formulas again, and that's where this lecture will stop. Okay, so we want to prove that the length of x times the length of y is greater than or equal to the absolute value of x dot y. Uh, I've put a lot of words up here so that you can read ahead if you want to, but I'll go slowly. If x or y is zero, then both sides are zero. Like if x is zero, then length of x is zero, so this is zero, and x dot y is also zero, so the statement is true in that case. So let's assume these vectors are not zero. In that case, let r be the length of x and let s be the length of y, which means that x is r times some unit vector u and y is s times some unit vector v. So here's maybe x, and here's y, and we rescale them to give some smaller unit vectors, u and v, which point to the same direction, but now these unit vectors have length one. x has length r, y has length s, u has length 1, v has length 1. Okay. Well, anything whatsoever dot with itself is greater than or equal to 0. So in particular, u minus v dot with itself is greater than or equal to 0. And let's just write down what that means. u minus v dot u minus v. If we use the distributive property, that's u dot u minus 2u dot v plus v dot v. Since u and v are unit vectors, u dot u and v dot v are both 1. So we get 1 minus 2u dot v plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. So 2 minus 2u dot v greater than or equal to 0. Rearrange that, and you get that u dot v is less than or equal to 1. So 1 is greater than or equal to u dot v, and u and v were x and y divided by r and s. So x dot y over r s is less than or equal to 1, and r s is greater than or equal to x dot y. Arguing in a very similar way, a negative r s is less than or equal to x dot y. So x dot y is between rs and negative rs, and that was what we wanted, QED. Okay, I'm going to just repeat my main formulas and stop. The length of a vector is the square root of its dot product of itself, and the angle between two vectors is the inverse cosine of their dot product divided by the product of their lengths. See you in the next video.